Hi guys, this is Sebastian again from CodingTheSmartWay.com. In this next uh, tutorial from the Angular Materials series, we will be now focusing on data tables and uh, yeah, just implement another example, making use of Angular Material Library. And you will learn how to apply data tables in your application, how to make use of data tables, and we will um, go step by step through the process of building another application from scratch. So stay tuned. So to get started, I've already prepared um, a new Angular um, 5 project and um, added to the corresponding um, Angular material libraries. Um, if you would like to um, have a tutorial of how to add <coughs> Angular material to your project, you can follow um, part one of um, our Angular material series. And here it is, that's the project. That's our, um, our basis where we are going to start now uh, the implementation part. And the first thing we now need to add here to the project is a new component because to integrate um, the Angular material data tables um, component into our application. I'd like to use a new component and I've already opened up the project here in Visual Studio Code as you can see. Um, I have opened up the integrated terminal here and now I can use um, Angular uh, command line interface um, to generate a new component in my application and the command I'm going to use here is ng uh, g for generate component and I'd like to add a new component in components slash um, user table should be the name of the component and okay let's hit return and you can see it's adding four new files here in src app components so let's take a look inside that folder you can see it here um, app Okay, maybe I need to refresh it here once. Okay, here it is, app components, user table, um, and you will find inside that new directory, a CSS file, HTML file, a spec.ts file, and a TS file. In our implementation, we will um, only need to edit the HTML file for uh, the template code and the TS file for the um, TypeScript implementation of the component class. Okay. So another thing which has been added automatically here in app.module.ts is um, our new component. You can see it here, the corresponding import statement has been added uh, without needing to do that manually. And user table component has also been added to the declarations array here. So we are ready to make use of user table component in our application. It's part of the main application module. Another thing I'd like to add here at the beginning is a service because uh, for displaying our uh, table later on, I need data, of course, so that's, um, um, that's needed to display several records in our table. And uh, I'd like to retrieve those data from an external web service. So uh, the best practice here is to establish a new Angular service, which is used to um, request data from the web service and um, makes those data available in our application. So let's quickly generate that service. Again, I'm using the Angular CLI here and GG. Uh, this time I'm generating a service. Should be in the, uh, the subfolder services slash user. That's the name of the service. So, okay, return again. And you can see two files have been added. Here is the services folder, and we will later use the file user.service.ts for implementing the service class. So as I have already opened up app.module.ts, um, I can bring in uh, some new uh, lines of code here. Uh, first of all, I need to add an import statement here, or let's say several import statements. I need to import um, something which is called mat table module because that's the module which is provided by um, the add angular material library 
uh, and which is containing everything we need to uh, set up a, a material data table here in our application. And then, of course, I need to import um, the HTTP client module, uh, which is used by our service for requesting data from the web service later on. And that is imported from um, Angular slash common slash HTTP. Okay, like so. So then, of course, um, as I have imported two uh, new modules here, and uh, I would make use of both modules in my application, I also need to add those modules here into the array, which is assigned to the imports property of the add ng module decorator here. Um, so let's uh, bring those uh, two modules in. So we have the mat table module and we have HTTP client module here. Okay. So another thing which is missing here, of course, we need to bring in our service. So let's add another import statement here uh, that is user service and it's imported from our project. So it's services user slash uh, let's see services user dot service like so okay uh, now having imported user service here uh, it needs to be added to app module um, of course and um, the place where a service is added is here in the providers array which is uh, empty at the moment so I need to bring it in here user service Okay, so next uh, we can continue to implement uh, the user service class. Um, but before doing so, let's first take a look um, at the web service I'd like to use and I'd like to request data from. And that's the following service here. Um, you can uh, see the result here already in the browser uh, when uh, typing in uh, this URL, JSON placeholder. Uh, dot typecode.com slash users and this is the service which is delivering um, user data as you can see here with um, a lot of properties um, it's delivering 10 records um, and we will use uh, those uh, user uh, records to be displayed in the um, angular material data table and so this is a service url we need to um, copy and then um, use in our user service class and uh, uh, retrieve data from that web service URL. You can see it here it's already in JSON format so um, the data is already in the format we, um, we uh, need to um, we need to have uh, for making use of that data in our application. So let's go back to our uh, code editor here and open user.service.ts. You can see that's already the uh, default implementation of the class. And now we are going to extend user service with the implementation we do need. So first let's uh, add a few import statements here. First of all, I need to import HTTP client and the HTTP client needs to be imported from the at angular um, slash common slash HTTP library. Um, then I need to import um, observable, um, which is provided by um, the RxJS library slash observable. Okay, like so. Then I need to import um, something which is not existing yet, but what we will be creating in a minute. Um, user. Um, user is containing our data model. Um, and this will be available in our uh, project in the models folder um, in a file which I will call later on user. 
model.ts. Okay, so we need a semicolon here. Okay, like so. Um, so first of all, here in the user service class, I'm uh, uh, declaring a property, a private property, which I call service URL, and that is a string, um, which I will set to the URL here from our service. So let's insert that URL here. Okay. Then I need to use dependency injection and inject the HTTP client instance here in the class constructor by using uh, the private keyword here, declaring um, a member HTTP in uh, that case. And this is of type HTTP client. So this is a way um, in which we are injecting HTTP client here in that class. And now I do need exactly one service method here, which is called get user. Um, and get user is uh, returning um, an object of type observable and observable is also typed and is an array of user. Okay. And uh, now I need to bring in uh, the web service request here by using um, the HTTP client object. So this dot HTTP. And then I would like to initiate an HTTP get request. So I'm using the get method here. And uh, what I need to pass inside of get is the service URL, which is available here in this dot service URL, okay, like so. And now to cast it to the correct type, I need to add here the type user um, array. Okay, so that's basically all what we need here inside of our service class. This should be working. And next, of course, as you see it here, it's underlined in red. We need to make sure that the model um, implementation uh, for user is um, there. Okay, to do so, let's create uh, here inside of our um, app folder, a new folder, which is called models. And inside that uh, models, folder let's create a new file and the file is called user.model.ts and um, now i can implement uh, the user um, model which is an interface so i'm using export interface user and uh, now i need to declare what properties should be part of our model and um, What's important here is we do not need all those properties. I just want to select uh, some of the properties, but the name of the properties I'm using in my user model class should be matching the name, which is used here um, in uh, the JSON structure, which is returned by the web service. So the properties I'd like to use um, are a name, uh, let's say email, um, phone, um here phone um and the company name okay so let's add those properties here first name which is of type string um, email string phone also string and then company um, information which is an object and containing the name which is again string okay okay so next let's open up the components uh, folder here within app uh, and uh, in subfolder user table open uh, up user table dot component dot html now we will start to implement um, the template um, which is needed to display uh, the data table 
Um, first of all, before doing so, let's first try out if everything is working correctly. So I'm changing here the selector in um, user table.component.ts to just user table. Okay, and then I'm opening up app.component.html. Let's remove all the default content here and uh, just bring in user table. Okay, you can see it here. The web server is uh, the development web server is already running, so I I'm able to uh, switch to my browser and see the result here. If I opening up a port uh, four thousand two hundred, and now it's printing out user table works, which is a proof that uh, the user table component um, is is working. Because if I go back, you can see it here in the template. It's printing out user table works. Okay, now we can delete all that stuff here and start over again. First uh, with a leading div tag here. Um, and now I'm starting with an element uh, from the um, Angular Material Library, um, which is the basis of uh, um, the, the data table. And that is called mat-table. And I need to bind uh, the uh, attribute data source here um, to the data source, which is delivering the data. So this is called data source again. We will implement data source um, later on in uh, file user table.component.ts. So uh, for the moment, I just um, I'm just using here the string data source, which is not defined yet. Okay. Now let's add the first column definition here to our table. And uh, each column definition is beginning with an ng-container uh, element. And we need to apply the mat um, column def um, directive here. And we are assigning a string here, which is containing the name of that column definition. So the first column definition is uh, getting the name name. Uh, like so. And within the ng-container element, we are using a mat-header-cell element. And now we are applying the mat-header-cell dev um, directive. And we're using uh, the asterisk here to uh, say that it should be handled uh, as an inline template. Um, and uh, what we need to include here is the uh, um, uh, the headline of the column. And the next element we do need here is the mat-cell element. And for that element, we need to apply the mat-cell dev directive. And we are assigning a string of let user um that is defining the user uh variable here and we can make use of user now here in uh inside of that element to display um um the value of um a property in this case it's the name of the current element so the current element is available uh, via user um, and uh, with the expression syntax here, we are um, reading out the value of the name property and inserting that value here in the cell content. So let's copy and pass that ng container element here and insert it a second time uh, and quickly change it to email. And it's user email. Okay, then we needed a third time uh, for phone. So I'm assigning phone as a name, phone as a column headline, and the property I'd like to display here is user dot phone. Okay, the last uh, column company 
company and the value I'd like to display is a variable in user.company.name. Okay. Okay, now I need to include two more elements here in mat table. Um, the next element is mat dash header dash row. And here I'm applying the directive mat header row def. And I'm assigning an array property, which I will later on define, which is listing the columns which should be displayed. Um, so the array here is named this uh, displayed columns. Okay, and the last element I'm I do need here as the mat row element, and I'm assigning <coughs> the directive mat row def. And I'm assigning a string here, let row semicolon uh, columns. And again, I'm using here the array, which is listing the columns I'd like to display. That's displayed columns. Okay, so that is the template. Now we can move on and add the last part of the implementation, um, which will go into user table.component.ts. So first of all, of course, I need to start here with adding a few import statements. Uh, I do need access to user service, which is imported from um, services user service. Okay. Then I need to uh, have access to observable, which is imported from um, the rxjs library slash observable uh, next i need to uh, import data source uh, from at angular cdk collections okay and finally, I need to import our data model interface user from the corresponding uh, file in models user.model. Okay. So then, before uh, finishing the implementation here of user table component class, I'm adding a new class here in that file uh, with export class user data source uh, which extends um, data source of type any and uh, this class is having a constructor the constructor is receiving uh, one uh, parameter which is uh, the user service object because the user data source class uh, we'll be making the service request uh, via that service. So we need to pass it in here. And we need to make sure that we are calling uh, the uh, super method here to call the parents constructor. Um, okay, and then we do need to implement a connect uh, method here, which is returning an observable um, of type user array. Okay, so let's say return this dot user service dot get user. Here we are making uh, the service call. And finally, we need to implement the disconnect method here which will remain empty. Okay, so then back to uh, the implementation of user table component class. First, uh, let's use dependency injection once again here in the constructor to inject an instance of user service. So 
so like so and then we are adding two uh, class members here the first is called data source because we have been assigning data source to the data source um, attribute um, here in our template um, in the mat dash table element so uh, and data uh, source is initialized with a new instance of user data source and we are passing in uh, the um, user service object here okay like so and then we need to um, define the uh, displayed columns um, member we have been using in our template code and here we are assigning an array of strings listing the name of the column definitions which should be displayed uh, so we have name that's the first one we have email the second one uh, phone the third one and the last one is company okay so okay here we are and uh, now the implementation is ready we can quickly change to the browser the development server is still running and you can see the output has been updated automatically and now we are getting back um, all um, data which is provided by the web service and we are listing um, the name email phone and company information here in the material data table as expected so this was Sebastian from codingthesmartway.com. Thanks very much for watching. If you do like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe uh, to my channel on YouTube. Also, don't forget to visit my website at codingthesmartway.com. And I hope very much to see you in the next video. So bye. <clears throat>